uh, this summer, my research project involved using a computationally intensive satellite remote sensing technique called DINSAR. Uh, DINSAR can give us dense regional scale readings of deformations over multiple years. And this project is a continuation of my RESIS 2021 summer internship in which we applied DINSAR to Greenland's coasts using images taken from the European Space Agency's Sentinel-1 satellites. Our current focus right now is the northwest portion of Greenland, shown on the left. We know that melting ice in Greenland is driving solid Earth deformation on the margins of the ice sheet, and we're interested in how geophysical processes like these can alter natural hazards, such as landslides on regional scales. So Global Navigation Satellite System, GNSS stations, are shown in yellow, and they're recording these lateral and vertical forcings on a daily basis, but we're more interested in these spatial patterns between these points and how much variability there might be. Uh, using DINSAR, we can visualize displacements over much broader areas. So each of the blue rectangles in the, um, in the map are frames that the Sentinel-1 satellite returns to every six to 12 days. So it acquires two overlapping radar images of the same area taken at different times and then we work to differentiate the phase information from the corresponding pixels in each of the images. Uh, the phase shift is proportional to the change in position. Uh, last summer, using DINSAR, we produced a time series map of surface displacement velocities over an ice free bedrock region, shown on the right. Uh, this map can be used to visualize short wavelength ground deformation, like subsidence, uplift, and landslides. And all motion is referenced to um, the red dot in the top right corner. We chose this since we know it's on relatively stable bedrock and we can observe all motion relative to that reference point. Uh, we determined that our next steps were to expand this workflow over larger areas. So uh, our goals this summer were one, to continue producing these deformation ma maps um, over larger regions of coastal Greenland, and two, to transition to using two new DINSAR computing environments, uh, developing a streamlined and highly automated workflow. Uh, we use two software environments for DINSAR processing. The first is the INSAR Scientific Computing Environment, or ICE2. Uh, it's responsible for precisely overlapping each Sentinel-1 image, as well as merging where the radar phase difference between the two images is computed and differenced uh, to create what's called an interferogram. So if you look at the sample interferograms on the left, the red indicates the terminus of a fast-flowing outlet glacier uh, moving away from the satellite's line of sight on the order of about two to three meters every six days. Using ICE 2, we processed nearly 300 Sentinel 1 um, radar images and produced about five to 600 interferograms per frame. Uh, these interferograms are converted into a time series of deformation over multiple years using uh, MintPy. Uh, the figure on the right is one such time series of surface displacement. Uh, it's all referenced to January 2019. Uh, this is just a sample uh, series of those displacements. Uh, finally, uh, MinPy estimates the velocity over our monitoring period, giving us a cumulative velocity map. So like the one produced um, last year, all motion in this velocity map is referenced to a stable reference point. In this case, it's the yellow um, GNS station. It's called CAGZ. Uh, ice flow in the vertical direction was um, 50 to 70 meters per year, which is roughly comparable with measurements from prior studies uh, of this outlet glacier putting flow velocity at about 100 meters per year. Uh, above and below the glacier front, we see silhouettes that represent ice-free bedrock undergoing slight uplift. So while the larger scale movement of ice dominates the whole frame, it's also possible to view smaller scale displacements uh, occurring on the surface of exposed bedrock. By zooming into specific scales, we can see localized changes on the order of about centimeters with these signals likely coming from pro-glacier river systems, valleys, fjords, et cetera. Uh, within the coming weeks, we expect to produce more velocity maps across the Northwestern coast, coast as um, DINSAR computing finishes. And the questions we're asking right now are whether or not GNSS station data is representative of these wider mass movements, and if we can identify signatures of landslides and other natural hazards. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Philip, that was great. Okay, the floor is open for questions, so you can raise your hand or put it in the chat. Oh, Sully, your hand is raised. What question would you like to ask? Yeah, so um, I've actually worked with INSAR for a bit, and I know it's a very lengthy process. So how, like, were did you run into any problems with INSAR? I didn't use that specific, um, I forgot what you called it, something I, two, the second one? Uh, the, yeah, I used to, yeah. 
too. Yeah, I didn't use ice too, but I used a different one. But I know that NSAR in general is a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, you know, you, you, I ran into problems, I think, that are pretty typical of computationally intensive projects, um, especially since this was, um, we, we were transitioning to using um, a newer updated version of, of um, the computing environment. And yeah, um, processing like this takes on the order of, of days to um, complete just um, yeah, just one frame. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely something you have to be pretty patient for. And I ran into a lot of issues, but um, I, I'm glad that we were able to produce something for, um, you know, for it to conclude this summer. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Julie. Okay, there's another question in the chat. What was the most challenging aspect of this second year in interning? Um, I felt the most challenging one was, um, I suppose, since I was remote, it was um, it, it was it was a bit of an issue to get that sort of like um, that that real time um, mentoring. Although I did have a lot of um, continued support, um, a lot of it was, I suppose, um, independent problem solving and diving deeper into the subject matter, which I had sort of been introduced to last year. And um, although that was a challenge, I think I, I got a lot out of it and um, from, from developing these skills further with computation and such. That's a great answer. Do you feel like it gave you like a glimpse into what grad school would be like or further research would be like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this this was a project that I've spent you know two summers um, working on expanding, and I think it's really influenced the way I. Um, it, it'll it'll really influence the sort of disciplines I I think I'll pursue in grad school. Great, that makes me feel nice to hear. So good. Yeah. Um, Scott would like to know, was there any particular result you were curious about last summer that you got to see done this summer? Yeah, I suppose um, because uh, we were only able to interrogate one specific um, you know, patch of exposed bedrock in, in one specific um, sentinel one in our frame, uh, I was really excited to be able to expand this and to see how um, uh, far larger um, displacements from ice were would would affect the um, would affect the cumulative velocity map, and we're still uh, it's it's really good that we're still able to um, resolve both um, these faster mass movements and more minute ones um, on the surface of exposed bedrock. Okay, 